I mean, love having TDS on this there, podcast, so. man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I feel just, bad bashing on LRN and LRS, but TDS pop off, King. <laughs> uh, nah, I, I, this is the tough. This is tough love. I- What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Salt Mine. This is our first sort of postseason Salt Mine for for season fourteen, I suppose. But we got one extra postseason tournament compared to what we've had in the past we have the uh america's tier two tournament coming on up here they're calling it america's challengers and for that reason on top of the usual crew we are joined by the fabulous random minion caster expert in in cb lol and as i didn't even know when i invited him on uh has even been dipping his toes into the latin american space a little bit uh in preparation for america's challengers so this is our expert on our non-NACL teams. He's going to fill us all in on what's been going on and uh, hopefully help us recap uh, NACL a little bit. But welcome Gordo, aboard, Gordo. RMC. How are you're you doing, missing my, my newest title. I'm apparently the LCS champion after that performance in the Grand Finals, didn't you know? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's huge. That's also true, yeah. Yeah, hey, you're right. Finals MVP. <laughs> yeah, finals MVP. Now, that was Cousin Bob, unfortunately preparing for uh, tier two so <laughs> that's good stuff huge huge accomplishment for minions everywhere though you got to give it to them <laughs> it had to happen at some point glad it happened this time glad it, it happened did, at literally it, though, the last it, Nexus it, explosion it. <laughs> <laughs> well it was at the end of the lcs so it had to happen at some point before True. everything what a, just what died. a way to see out the lcs <laughs> i i stood up and said we will never see that again that's the first thing i said after it happened well, like, we, we're just not going to yeah well, when what I when I saw it happen, because because Slayer and I were were in the YouTube theater to see it happen, I I like stood up, and after my initial shock, I just looked behind me and I see Ender of all people just like up there, like <laughs> you know, for like l- like fifteen seconds straight, and I'm like, I shouldn't go say hi to him. He's he's in shock right now. Anyway, the game. So, I actually yeah. forgot he was in LA as well. Like he he UCT. went from EU to an a- to NA just like that. Yeah, I forgot about him actually. He's doing Valorant stuff, right? Yeah. BCT. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's why he's there. Good for him. Yep. Good for him. Well, what what an event. Yeah, I was I was watching with a couple of friends. There were a lot of there was a lot of yelling. There is We were robbed of a game five, but we got memories out of it. That's, <laughs> yep. Somewhere else we've been robbed of, of a game five or even a game four yet again was the uh the NACL championship. So let's start off with NACL. We'll do promo tournament after. Mm-hmm. NACL playoffs, which we have been uh, kind of sadly undercovering on this show because, uh, you know, the schedule's all condensed now. We had the promo tournament going on right alongside the NACL playoffs. All in all, I think it's probably a better schedule for the players and for the audience. It's only worse for podcasters. So we'll give them a break there. If We'll take one for the team this time around. But uh, it does make our episode schedule a little bit messy I'm not going to go through each and every series. Uh, I think everybody knows the general results. We came down to a Cincinnati Fear versus Dragonsteel final, where Dragonsteel took a page out of FlyQuest's book from last split and 3-0'd it. Just kind of want to ask the group, any any kind of wide sweeping narratives, teams, things to look at from the full NACL playoffs that we want to have a little discussion about. The, the big thing about that series was, uh, I, I mean, obviously was zamudo i think um like the the growth of zamudo as a player had already you know won him the the most improved player of the split but i think he really showed up on the day like particularly against a top laner like philip who i think has gotten you know a a decent amount of praise uh i you know i gave him some praise when we did our uh our rankings for like each each role um, and who we thought was best. I thought Philip was the second best top laner in the league, but I, I gave Zamudo number one uh, because I thought he was really, really good. And I also felt like his diversity was what made him such a strong player as well. Like, particularly, this man could really play Udir. And we saw that in game number one. That was really hard to watch. And it was especially hard to watch in real life when I was just sitting there watching Zamudo zone this Nasus off of, like, potentially like 50 stacks just sitting right in front of him like that that was tough and then on top of that he goes in he plays garen uh he had like a funny comms moment too slayer remembers this where um he killed someone and then he like they go to his like voice 
and he's like, oh yeah, just play with the team, guys. That's what they said. And he's just because he's just like split pushing the entire game. So I think Zamudo really had a glow up this season, but I think it was solidified how good he's gotten uh, in that series in particular. Yeah, I uh, I definitely got the vibe that might be some stage jitters from some of those uh, those fear members. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think I also think fear drafted themselves into a hole for sure when it came to Philip. I mean. We're blinding Nasus into Zamudo now, like, like, yeah. Is is that is that where I like? I think the entire strength of Nasus in a lot of these pro play games has been as a counter option in mid to kind of or even top sometimes, like kind of throw up some of these matchups. But unless we're reworking Nasus, man, there's no world we should be blinding a champion like this. So I, you give you give Zamudo that freedom. It was it it was a struggle to watch uh, how Philip kind of got set up, and then you know I got to give. I gotta give credit to guys like Scary Jerry, uh, you know, and in, in the Dragon Steel guys, because I know a lot of people talked about Scary Jerry being, you know, a stage choker. Um, obviously, there's mantras around Merrillville because they weren't always Dragon Steel when they choked on stages. Um, being, you know, you know, stage chokers, they looked really calm and composed, and you know, locked in like they'd been talking about. They've been locked in this entire time, and I do think it was very fitting and very cool to see Zamudo be kind of the X factor because. As Niles said when him and Zamudo did their like interview at the end, like Niles was very close to just taking the top lane role and playing for this team again. And he told Zamudo that he was going to push him to n- no bounds if he's going to take the spot. And yeah, he was the X Factor and arguably the X Factor to finally get Maraville a title. So as much as I wanted a series and to not, you know, go to the live NACL finals and sit there for an hour 45 total, uh, it was very cool from a storyline standpoint that, <laughs> that you know, Maraville finally got over that hump and put Collegiate on the map as high, well, basically as high as Collegiate can be put on the map at this point. Well, maybe we'll see next year, I guess, technically, but maybe. right now it's the highest you can put Collegiate on the map. Yep. I'm just saying you could put it down in Sao Paulo. <laughs> that's oh, yeah, yeah, option. that's true, too. That's also an option, right? <laughs> yeah, I I kind of, yeah, the, the narrative between Dry and Steel and Fear, uh, Fear X Starforge, it felt like the passing of the baton to me. Like, Fear FX, FX is the sort of L, LCS team, right? All their players have LCS experience. They're all, they've made it, they've been to Tier 1. And you've got Dragon Steel on the other hand, who, like, these are college kids, right? This is the new the new generation, the, the younger talent coming up, and the fact that they could beat ffx like that in the grand finals i think it it kind of sparks like there's hope there's talent like hey na tier two like we have people we can promote that we have mm-hmm. new players to pick up uh yeah and th- the way they did too as dominantly as they did it i think that was just kind of the icing on the cake for me yep i think overall that's kind of the um... One of the main takeaways that you can go from there with the fact that they did it in such a dominating fashion as well. I think it's kind of funny also talking about it, the fact that both spring and summer had such dominating finals in that the number one team was clearly the number one team. That that was just a clear cut uh, way of looking at both splits. And I think a big part of this that I want to try and pull out is the huge growth that Dragonsteel Maryvale, whatever they want to call themselves in the future, if they change anything, uh, they did a really important thing with their growth. And more so than just taking away the stage fright, I think that it's more so just being able to do what they were doing generally in stage or at stage. Because their regular season performance was really good as well when you look at spring, even when there was Niles. But when it came to playoffs, I feel like they threw away a little bit of their playing style because they were trying to play not to lose more so than to win in a lot of the situations in spring particularly when you look at them in summer you see a team that is willing to just go for the win when they need to and they are not scared to go for the win even if that means taking a little bit more risks and i feel like it's a nice mesh of what i think maryville had last year when they had a different roster yes but they had more willingness or willingness to commit to things even if they were crazy even if they also had uh lesser players to put it like that or players that weren't that good compared to their competition yeah that's our a better way to put it and this time around they took both things combined it and they found something really magical that worked for them and it goes to show that they 3 0 the grand finals i also will say i feel like there needs to be more push onto scary jerry because for as much as i do agree that yuji was clearly like the better jung the best jungler I think the difference between him and the second jungler is much lesser than scary jerry and the second ad carry 
Like, I think Scary Jerry is miles ahead of the next AD carry that is in the NECL. Where Yuji, the next one, I think that it's much more comparable. Mm -hmm. I'm... I I'm very high on both players coming out of, of this split, I think. I, I think both deserve some LCS looks. Uh, yeah. And we'll try... I think we're going to run back the episode we did last year where we talk about players that maybe have some LCS potential. Maybe we'll wait until we get a little deeper into the offseason so we have a better idea of uh, what teams we're talking about and what uh, what the likelihood hmm. is of uh, of certain teams versus, versus other teams. Um and and how they might build their rosters, uh, you know what Latin yep. American team we get, what uh, guest team we start out with, things like that, um, will definitely influence that decision making. Um, but I think that both those players are very high on my list of players that should be getting uh, should be getting looks from the next level. Um, totally agree with what everybody else said about uh, kind of a passing of the baton moment and a huge accomplishment for the collegiate ecosystem as a whole uh, to be able to have that sort of performance. Uh, I, I do, I, I had forgotten about this up until watching the final, but this is supposed to be Zyko's last year with the program, uh, probably his last split. I um, hope he gets something, man. He was yeah, so we'll see. I mean, I would, I would love to see him get a shot somewhere. I do still think, like, he kind of has a little reputation for some stage jitters now after, like, he pretty publicly kind of blamed himself for spring, and... He still looked a little like I, I don't know. Out of everybody on Dragon Steel, I think most of them clutched up. I think Zyko still looked a little. He had a couple uncharacteristic mistakes in the final. We'll say. Remember, he drove he drove the Rift Herald into the wall that one time. Yeah. He had some, okay. That like, was hilarious. He had okay, some but rift, uh, <laughs> that was the best. There was some like there's that rel play up top side in game one. He like tanks turret for a bunch the, of time. The three for no man reason. dive that gave that gave X you a triple. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he made some mistakes. He didn't play. Uh, I think, oh. and it's. They wouldn't be, they were small and they didn't affect the outcome, obviously. Uh, and they wouldn't be so noticeable if they weren't so they much were different. If they weren't such a departure from the level we see from Zyko nearly every other game. Um, and, you know, these guys don't get many stage reps. I would still love to see Zyko get, get something to be able to continue to play. Um, well, especially the, the because, thing... I mean, if we support in this re we talked with summer about this earlier in the split and we talked amongst ourselves about this earlier in the split support in uh nacl has been a little weak uh for a while and uh we're on the verge of losing psycho and chime in the same <laughs> off season it, well, it's Psycho get... can always stay in the NACL, no? Because, yes, his time with Maryville is up, but he can technically just go to another he NACL He could, team. but I don't know. Usually or, when or he can do... college, you might want to get a real do... job. <laughs> he can do the, the, what is it called? The same thing that, that Winthrop did with just bringing players from other collegiate teams, and he just goes and does his masters and just plays for a he collegiate could. team. He could. That could also be... But, like, I, I also think that there is going to be, especially because it's going to be the first year, we still need to know the the um, the inside information about how it's going to work, because I think that it's going to be similar to BCT Americas, but I'm not 100% sure. But depending on how much the teams that are going to be promoted uh, for the system, or how that, that system is going to work, I can, see be, I can see a lot of teams just in general looking at the better talent and trying to form a team with whatever talent they can bring psycho being included in that be it from either north america or latin america yeah i'm, I'm gonna keep it stack guys i i actually think that psycho is 100 percent in tier two next year <laughs> I, I think i think like trajectory wise and the and the where the role is at right now i i just i just think that what i mean we don't know the number of teams that are going to be calling but i think like 80% of these teams are calling. Yeah. Like, I, I, and, I think, like, the only roster that off the top of my head that I don't think is calling is, like, I'm pretty sure FlyQuest are going to run Cryogen. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. th that's, yeah. like, basically where I'm at. So, if Zyko wants it, like, this is the peak, you know, this is the best, yeah, maybe not the best finals. This is obviously the best he's ever played in his career by this point. Like, if he wants to, you know, take a, take a year as a young guy and say, I'm just going to play a year of Tier 2 and see if I can keep developing, pretty sure he'll have suitors. That's where yeah. I'm at. I... But I mean, if I'm Zyko here and, and you know, I, I just graduated the program and I was on the best team, I just won. And I mean, I mean, realistically, like, where would I want to go from there? Because it feels like anywhere other than DSTL, I would risk going backwards almost because like I at the moment, like I'm super high up. 
and I'm like, everyone has their attention on me. The only competition that I had in the support role is going into law school next year. So it's like, what exactly, like, like what, what is his actual angle if he does stay in tier two? Because I feel like whatever angle he chooses isn't going to be as good as the shape he currently finds himself in with the STL. So, I'm not sure I subscribe to that. I feel like if that's the mindset that you have, then you probably aren't the best in your role or you're yeah. not at the top, right? Like if you're at the top, you say, okay, well, I'm good enough. I just need to find an AD carry who can actually work with me, right? And kind of go mm -hmm. from there. And I think a lot of this goes back to what TDS was saying too. We don't know the format of tier two next year necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Depending on how it goes, if a lot of agents open up, sure, support might be a little bit weak, but if we're saying Zyko is good and things change, there's a lot of AD carries you could potentially pair with and then say, hey, build around us, right? Like this is the bot lane we want to roll with. And mm -hmm. then it just becomes the question of, are you actually that good? And can you find a team who you can play with? That's yeah, I, I think I think the important thing, like growth is like the word. I think it's actually huge if you want. Because Dragonsteel has been preached as the system, right? Like mm -hmm. they have, they've been a system. A really good way to show that you are potentially a tier one player is to say, here's how I look in a system, but here's how I look in a completely different one. Like I, yeah. I, this doesn't change. And if he can do that, that's like honestly a bigger step to me than winning a fine winning an nacl title with a team a system is to then go to another team and show that and you're still that good of a thing. player well, yes it's like what what's nice is told as the last time that he was here right like for the ducky getters guys the his uh his uh, advice was that you look for a team different from the one that you play in try and get more experience with that and that way you can develop more it's a similar thing with Psycho here, obviously not going to the ACL, although if you want to come to the ACL, gate, the door is open, you can come here, we'll welcome you very gladly. But apart from that, like there, there's other ways to try that out, and I think Psycho has the not only the reputation, but also the potential to just play in any place, and I think that he can deliver. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's fair. I, I definitely hope that we get to see more of him next year. I, I just feel like they keep talking about his departure like it... Uh uh represents him potentially not being here but i would love to see him i hope he i hope he is there on playing. anyone that has already been maybe teased as a potential replacement for psycho or is there anyone in the team that 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 is already in the team like for their b team or something like that for maryville no, no but i i honestly i feel like at this stage of the ecosystem like maryville get like their pick of the litter i think like yeah a yeah. lot almost any collegiate support would transfer schools i think to go to maryville unless they're so unless they're very committed to the educational institution but like there's only one that i know wouldn't yeah like if you're playing though for or two you thinking of light pulse or somebody like no that? Like, no no sure, i'm thinking like, of those guys won't miracle miracle's already committed to saint Clair. I know Phantom Star is set up in Converse by this point. Like I, I don't, I, I'm pretty confident neither of them move for Maryville. So, as I, even I know the lures there, but I don't think they move for. for so Maribel. as another question, who do you think they would pick from? Like let's say from the tier three supports that we saw this played, who do you think they go for? I mean, mixture? I think like pick. Mixture, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say Pika Pika and Mixture are probably the two that like I would think of when it's like these are the supports that okay. I want to provide. Or I mean, like you can get like, almost anybody think, else I from tier hiccup. two too, right? Like I, I think if you could, hiccup, like, like you know, if you like, if we could develop hiccups tank and engage yeah. support players, then yeah, I, mean, I would immediately yes, get hiccups. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But um, I think like hiccup, for example, with Terry Jerry would be a really interesting duo to see, just based on what the Ducky <laughs> uh, did. Wild. But, but yeah, like overall, I think that there's, I probably uh, would be agreed. Th those three are probably the three that I look at the most. If you're thinking tier three, right? If you're thinking tier two, you can probably still win some. True. <laughs> he did it once, probably will do it twice. <laughs> That's very true. Let's change I... gears a little bit. And uh, some other news coming in from around the NHL. So Keel announced his retirement and moved to coaching. Just a couple days ago, uh, this is after a disappointing performance from Team Liquid Challengers. I think, in in their perspective, I'm feeling like this team's kind of boom, right? Like they're gonna probably yeah. start a new yep. project. I think there's. I've said this before. Uh, I I remain convinced of it. There's no way Romer's in this region next year. He's just. I I don't even think he was. I don't think he did poorly. Uh, you know, he was my second team All Pro. Uh, I think deservedly so. Um. But I called this out when I gave him my second team all pro. I think that's the last split we'll probably see of him in NACL. I think he was pretty clearly a backup plan if APA did not continue to develop. 
Uh, and, and I boy, think Team Liquid are developed. rolling with APA next year. I'm going to take a wild yep. bet on that here. So I, <laughs> I think they're, uh, I, I think the Romer experiment is probably done for. Uh, and, Whoop. you know, with Keel's departure, I think there's at least a sort of rebuild going on in the TLC house. I remember we talked about this. else is moving out, though, from that roster. What was that, RMC? I'm curious if anybody else, like, I mean, Jenkins spawned. I think Kira, Jenkins. Like... I think the only we only want to stay is if any. We talked about this a little bit before. I remember that I think it was Gordo that said the same thing that more than likely the roster would be not. Re I don't remember if the word was rebuilding, but it was going to at the very least lose two players. I think I said that they were going to lose four, and I thought the only one that was going to stay was Kim down. But the more I think about it with no kill as well, I think Jenkins probably is the safest bet. Yeah. I would say they probably keep Jenkins and Kim down. Uh, they really like Kim down in house over there. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, he doesn't. I I didn't have him as like one of my top supports, but I have rarely had him as one of my top supports. And but like I know Coach Spawn loves him. I know they love him in Team Liquid. Core JJ likes him. Uh, at least did when they originally scouted him and brought him in. Um, and I mean, if Spawn likes you and Core JJ likes you, I think your odds of being on Team Liquid are very high. Yeah. So oh, uh, oh. I, I would bet he stays. Get ready for uh, TL Aaron or Levitate. Ooh. Oh. That's what I'll say. I mean, if you're either of those guys. I them picking up Levitate. Uh, I think that's a great idea. If you're either of those guys, do you, you don't say no. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. I, I mean, mean get I, that. I, yeah. I think both of those AD carries are a really good option. I think Levitate has a few more accolades to him, at least. Well, no, actually, that's wrong, because Aaron just won Seelul. Um, But I I don't know. If you, if you go for them, I feel like there are also other AD carries out there that they might be scouting, because I feel like Team Liquid, if they're really trying to rebuild, I think there's a decent chance they, like, dig deep and, like, maybe look for some, like, very... Um, like hot takes when it comes to like who they're trying. Yeah, to pick, I, I wouldn't be right? shocked if they take like a like TL and FlyQuest are these team are are more than anybody else the teams that are here to develop talent more so than win. Um, I think that's why I that's why me and Slayer called this out earlier. Expect FlyQuest to start Cryogen. Um, you know I don't think Cryogen is the best support in tier two. Um, he's never played a split of tier two, and I don't think he's gonna come in and you know instantly be the best um granted i didn't think sajed was going to do that either and he kind of did but um i think even l i i think cryogen's even more raw than sajed was but yes. i think they are i think these the the lcs affiliates tl and flyquest will naturally be more inclined towards those sorts of players uh that are younger and have more to learn uh, and mm -hmm. for that reason, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see TL go for like a sushi or somebody too. I would love to. Um, yeah, I, that would be crazy if yeah. they went for sushi. But I, I feel like that's exactly the kind of move they would go for. My big question is, um, is uh, well, I mean, obviously we'll get into the promotion tournament in time, but like, what happens to Array? Because I feel like there's uh, like a lot of question marks around him now. Somebody who um, wants to win will get Array. <laughs> that's, yeah, <laughs> that's my yeah. take. Somebody who should win will get Array, but that wasn't the case apparently. Most recently, true. I'm still shocked that Disguise didn't just go for him instead of, and maybe there were talks behind the scenes used to say. Well. I thought the consensus was that he said no because yeah. he wanted to win with the goons. I I, th I think I, th I I don't I think, think it's I don't know if it's confirmed, consensus. but I heard I heard multiple times that like the goons roster wanted to stay together because I would believe that if he's together. rejecting offers from like AOE and CCG. But I would think disguise you take because not only do I think disguised is a like long term competitive tier two org, uh, I do think that, uh, but I also think like I would be if I were a betting man. Uh, and I am, but I don't know where to bet on this. But if, if I were able to bet on this, uh, I would be putting my money on DSG being the inaugural guest team. Uh, yeah, so I think like getting your, getting your foot in that door might and might put you in LCS in 2025. Yeah, um, so I would be very shocked at with, somebody turning down that guys? opportunity. But that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Um, it's definitely possible. Mm, sure. Uh, I'm actually curious. Did not Ray play a little bit for disguise? Now that I think he about it, for, for Supernova. Supernova, like, yeah. Supernova. And they dropped him for Lens. And it, okay, yeah. So, yeah, I was trying to think if maybe he played a split with uh, with this guy, and maybe that actually impacted his 
No, he is the this guy's with went that from buddy. Beach to Manui to uh, yeah to Tomo, but to back to Manui. Yeah, the, I think he he actually now I remember he took a split off, and that's why I thought he was playing with them. But no, he took a split off, no. or After took a split off. Technically, he, he, he was a sub. Uh, I think he was subbing he was a for, sub. Yeah, yeah he so he was for a sub Guardians. for GG. So he technically took a split off of a tier two, but he was in tier one. Uh, yeah. For a Ray, I think his stock's still pretty decent because. For the Goons oh, yeah. team, I think he was one of the best players anyway, even oh, in the promotion the tournament. Yeah. So, so like his stock is still quite high. The thing is that when I look at the eighty carries that they are currently in NECL, but also out of NECL, I'm actually kind of curious how it's going to to move around because one that didn't qualify for the promotion tournament, but I think is one of the better eighty carries is Links, for example. And I think he should be getting a chance at NACL as well, but like I don't think there's going to be the spots for all of them to be able to play. Yeah, I, I, I would not to like these are like fun conversations. I do want to say like this is obviously fun. This does feel like conversations that we should probably be having in like like two a months. month, two months, yep. right? Like Agreed. we're kind of delving into the like trying to build those rosters. So yeah, yeah, I mean, format, we don't. Know yeah, and it's going to be better yeah. with a much pan out format. I agree. Yeah, when we know so, who who will get to do what. Yeah, so I feel like maybe this with is a good that, time since we, yeah, we, 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 we just talk about tournament, tournament for sure. Yeah, Unless yeah. anybody has any other hot takes about any seal playoffs, I'm happy to move on to promo tournament. So uh, hot take. Oh wait, I just a hot take. Uh, oh, I, ju I just had one quick hot take, or I'm not sure if it's a hot take or not. But I swear, Blue Otter should have won. I I really feel like they should have <laughs> like won. Like the whole tournament? Not the no 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 no. Their <laughs> yeah. series. Their oh, okay. series. No, yeah, no. I'm not that delusional. Oh, like, against like Supernova. <laughs> against yeah. Supernova. yeah, yeah. Like I I swear they should have won, but I yep. like that series was so. Like, like they took so many things wrongly in so many moments, and I just can't, I cannot say that it wasn't just uh, nervousness coming in from the players at that time. It felt so unlucky because they they were playing great, and then some decisions just immediate question mark things. I don't know, man. Supernova just has a mental. I'm uh, sorry, Blue has a mental block against Supernova for whatever yeah. strange reason. Yeah, it, it just could not perform. I was, uh, yeah, I was shocked watching them play as well. Oh well, yeah, that's my that's my whole thing with. With them raining with playoffs. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's a shame that their run ends there. I th I agree. I think yeah. they had a couple of games there that they could have won, had a couple of things gone differently. Um, let's talk about promo tournament. We got the double defense coming through from AOE yes, and CCG. We're running time. it back for 2025, in theory. Uh, maybe they changed the format, but I, I have a feeling they're going to keep NACL format largely the same. Um, so... CCG, AoE, they're running it back. Uh, AoE, sure to have roster changes, because I think Onat's done with this. Um, can't say I would blame him uh, for how his journey has gone. Um, yeah. CCG, with an interesting kind of rebuild situation going on. I, uh, I'm 50-50 on my prediction rate. I don't know about the rest of you guys. Well, I don't think any of us had both. I always I go one for two, man. All I'm hell, always Kyra. one for two. I'll oh, take that. There's six teams that you can guess from going 50-50. Pretty good. That's a pretty good rate. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put my hat on that. I will die on the hill that if Lotus won the series against Polestar, I think Lotus qualifies. I don't think they lose against AOE. I can't believe they lost that series to Lotus. <sighs> yeah. That lower right, bracket I mean, was no nuts. I mean, it's just nuts. The lower bracket was absolute chaos. Like, nothing... Yeah, and it... I, I also Nothing think it showed sense. like sh it showed something really important about how bad it is to actually win your first series because <laughs> like because when you look at like the both teams play bo the four teams that played right goons two owed uh, or two one Polestar and Ducky two owed Lotus. They yeah. both go on to play three game series. Then the very next day they lose that, and then the very next day they lose two zero as well to the both of the lower bracket teams. So I just I just think and more so than the lower bracket teams having an advantage or anything like that, I just feel like you cannot make that an immediate like play. Because you have to at the very least give them a fighting chance to study for their next opponent. But you're going to throw the teams that go from lower from upper bracket to lower bracket with no prep time and immediately to try and, and go over the fact that they just lost the demoralizing two and one. Particularly Ducky Getters or yeah, particularly Ducky Gators, I think they were closer. Actually, no, 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 sorry. Goon were closer to being able to actually go over uh, AoE 
and they lost in a pretty moralizing manner. So I can just see them going into that next series against Lotus, a team that they have already played against and they knew that it was going to be difficult and it was going to be a pretty tough match for them. And uh, lo and behold, 2-0 both series. I just love how the lower bracket was the exact opposite of how both qualifiers went. Like the exact yep. opposite. Like the both qualifiers, the goons absolutely sunned Lotus. Like they, it, like it was not close at any, any points. Like finals qualifier one, second time rent, not close. Oh, Lotus 2-0. Oh, Arrain Dab should play their worst League of Legends of the entire freaking summer. Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, oh, the Dragoon beam finally doesn't hold up. Whoa, I guess 0 6 was the marker, not 0 5. I mean, like, it was just absolute chaos. And, like, now I'm questioning if Dragoon is actually, a, like, a gatekeeper for tier 2 top laners. Didn't look like it there. And then Polestar, I mean, if, if Goons were sunning Lotus, Lotus was smacking Polestar around that entire qualifiers. And then we get the yep. coolest series of the entire summer. With a three-two, where we're getting Blitzcrank Vein in Game Five, it gets Pole Star <laughs> from from freaking Stushi and Mixture. It's just it's absolute pandemonium. So it, I don't I'm like still trying to like react to what I saw because like everything I believed about all three of these teams just felt like it went out the window. It really, even that Vein pick, the Vein Blitzcrank pick, man, that was so it. Oh, it really does feel so like, and we've talked about yeah. this before, but we let it, we forget oh. about it every time, and we will forget about it again because if we if we don't forget this, then we have no content. But I feel like everything just goes out the window for promotion tournament every time. Like yeah. every no, it's the lower ever... bracket. It's only the lower. The lower sure. bracket is the goddamn witching hour. It's the twilight zone. It's just there's <laughs> chaos down there every time. Big. Whenever I think the lower bracket's gonna play out, I'm immediately now gonna predict the opposite. That is my rule. I'm predicting the opposite <laughs> of what true. I think is gonna happen in the lower bracket. Yeah, it's... we've got blue otter. We had blue otter run, and now we had freaking pole star one series away from being in the NACL. Like, and what's going had, on? You had lit esports before that, and supernova yeah. before that. Yeah. It, it's a it's a well kept tradition at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's just really like. It's who shows up on the patch and on the tournament and, and who can I think mentally also, hold it together in what is a grueling bracket with a lot of stakes. Yeah, and also actually I think Goon, I think Goons is the first, or or is it? I think they are the first T uh, first seeded team that failed to qualify because Mirage Alliance qualified uh, before them. It was CCG that qualified as the number one seed. And well, I think before them, before them, I think there were two as well that qualified as well, number Maryville one. I don't did. remember who. Um, they're, they're, definitely did. The, they're definitely the first back-to-back -back qualifier champions that didn't qualify that, for the Pro yeah, yeah. So, so like they're they're they them failing to qualify is a, not only a big failure, uh, obviously on, on the part of the Coons, but I think it just goes to show how meaningless actually winning the two tournaments is. Like, as long as you can just secure your, your position, you can just try and be the best in that one tournament. I agree. Because they don't play in the same in the same patch, they don't play the same days, you don't play in the same manner that you did, and you also can change. Because remember, Polestar put Sagiwabe in. Yeah, so I agree. Being seated one can versus change players. one, two, three, four really feels like it does not matter very much. I don't think... Yeah, the, the difference is the upper bracket, I think. I think the difference has to be that... Uh, number one and number two, where you actually get one to see your opponents beforehand. I think that's a, a real difference maker, and that's an advantage that NACL teams occasionally do get the better uh, out of the other teams. Uh, obviously, the last place usually is the one that always kind of messes it up, but in general, it just gives them a really nice edge to know who they're playing against first and foremost, and also to have that rest beforehand. RMC, you look deep in thought. What's up? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I'm not sure I agree that like the seating kind of doesn't matter. Um, I think this this split in particular was kind of weird. Uh, the fact that Goons kind of crapped the bid, yes, that that's one thing. But let's not also forget it's the first time that both NACL relegation teams defended their spot, right? Yep. Yeah. So it is also kind of like a different landscape coming in for for a lot of these teams. So I like I, I get the idea that. You just need to qualify for this tournament. The exact points kind of don't matter. Sure, I, I can kind of get behind that. Um, but I do think Dragoon's Goons, especially this this particular tournament, just did not perform. Like you That's said, true. it was like Arrays and Daption's worst performance. Yeah. But, I mean, to me, more so than the Dragoon's Goons not qualifying, it's the long history of fourth seeds qualifying. 
Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, we just went through the list, right? Like, Blue Otter, yeah. Lit, Supernova. Like, there's been a lot of tier. And then Pulse makes a deep run here. Like, it feels like... Yeah, like, like it's it does not generally hinder you from being... Like, if you're going to have any shot of making top two, it feels like it does not matter whether your first-round opponent who your first round opponent is, especially out of the the teams coming up rather than the teams coming down. I wonder how much of that's also like poor seeds don't get prepped against this much. True. Right? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, and then that's the other thing too, is it's also, it's like the, the first seed, fourth seed match. First, did, I, did I say that right? The first seed, fourth yeah. seed first match seed fourth, yep. gets to play the 10th seed and the second seed, third seed match gets to play the ninth seed um, from NACL. But like the NACL teams have such freedom to make roster changes that it's like, yeah. wh which yeah. between the ninth and tenth team is actually weaker? Yeah, way up. In which the I air. think is uh, is one of my biggest arbitrary. gripes as well. Like when you compare the in the AOE team at the start of the split to the AOE team at the end of the split, yep. right? I think if you put the AOE team from the first week, we have Pulsar in the NACL next split. Sure. Or any of the other four teams. Yeah, any of the other four teams is in. <laughs> take but take like, your pick. If you have to play, if you have to play against a team that pretty much went through a full-on roster change because nobody of the first week uh, players it was on that last week uh, team, then what is the purpose of actually having the split running along, right? Like, if you are, are just willing to throw whatever happens, and then at the end you get the better players, or you try and set up a better system then it's going to be a little bit against the purpose of it. And I'm not saying it because I didn't want AoE to win. Like, I didn't want AoE to win, but even if it was a team that I actually like, I wouldn't want that either way. Like, I want the teams to have not equal conditions, because one is Tier 2 and the other is Tier 3, but at the very least a closer matchup than they actually get. Yeah, I agree. And this has been, like, this is something Normology used to rant about all the time. Um... It's because his team got demoted. Um, but, but, uh, <laughs> but it is it, the, the the rules around roster construction are night and day between the teams that are established in the NACL and teams that are coming up yeah. to the promotion tournament. Yeah. And it's like I and I appreciate that they are strict for the upcoming teams. I do really think they should make it three of five starters rather than five of seven on the roster total. Um or four of seven on the roster total. Um, uh, but that aside, uh, I get why like those rules are in place. I think that's for the best that teams don't just like qualify and then go for a total rebuild. Uh, and then the players end up screwed. Um, but... Kind of like CCG. Well, the players didn't end up screwed on CCG. Speaking. They ended up in better yeah, situations. No. So it's, yeah, I will say, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't mean screwed. Not the I mean, that yeah, played. I don't yeah. mean screwed. I mean, they're just completely bo uh, blown open, and CCG had only one player remaining. Yeah, from I mean, that well, one. and it's like if you imagine like, a situation okay. like CCG, except all the players get like thrown back down to tier two. That's or to tier three. That's that's miserable, right? You yeah, want you yeah, want, exactly. want that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I it definitely feels like the teams coming down from tier two need to be held to like a similar standard somehow. I don't really know how you do that for a team like AOE though, where all your players keep retiring uh, <laughs> because and unretiring yep. technically. Well, yeah, but it's like Wixie clearly just like decided, nah, you know what? I'm done. Um, the clearly uh Cupic decided this competitive play experiment was not you... working out great, and, and he was... Do we want to bet that we see Wixie next year for any of the <laughs> yeah. NA, no. NACL or any team that is trying to go to Tier 1? Like, this actually could be the best chance for Wixie to get into Tier 1. Not saying that he couldn't oh, before, no. but like... Done. No, I don't, I don't think it's It would be hilarious, though. And then tier one. Mo Moose <laughs> Hater was the other one who clearly just, like, kind of saw the door and, and got out of there. Oh, but and... here's the thing. In Tier yep. 2, you are, the, the players are in the contract database. So there are contracts. Mm, well, they are con there are contracts. Um, the contract database is only for players making LCS minimum. The only NACL players in the contract database this year were Quad and Romer. Ah, uh, okay. Um, nobody, I, I other, nobody else made the database. And there, we talked about this with the winsome drama uh, that you may have been a little insulated <laughs> Dude, from yeah. RMC. No, but, uh, yeah, 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 like you, the, you, the you only get all the, the you only get all the poaching protections and everything that Riot enforces 
if you're on the GCD. And you only get on the GCD if you're paying LCS minimum. So virtually <laughs> nobody in the NACL has that. The only people that did were Quad and Romer. And that's the problem. I think you, you need those contracts in place to stop this kind of crap from happening. That way players can't ditch teams halfway through. Or you've got subs to, to cover for that. And if you don't have players to play through the rest of the season, then lose your spot. I also understand why they don't do it, though, because technically speaking, like, the bare minimum for the contract is 75000 right? So you cannot just move the bar up and down because now you may get a situation where LCS teams may take advantage of that, and that's not probably the most ideal. Just have a lower but, like, at the same time, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you can do just obvious. one, a lower, like, the lower level tier, uh, the tier two, you can set it as tier one contracts, tier two contracts, yeah. and you put both in the database with the marker, and that way it's much better to understand around that because i do agree like players like obviously in the AOE situation and all that but i feel like players like 30 should be at the very least in the gcd in some way because they have to be protected in some manners from the in con uh, with the contracts yeah I, and I've, for other players. I've advocated for this before like i agree that the ceiling should be lowered a little bit for those protections but mm -hmm. i do also like uh conceptually like i think it's a good I think the fact that you need to kind of buy those sorts of protections as an organization is is a good like is a good pro player like position to have. Like I don't think you should have full ownership of a player in their career for like 500 bucks a month. Like if you're not paying like a proper living wage, I think you shouldn't have the ability to block those players from moving to better opportunities and stuff. Like I kind of I think the winsome opportunity was like very fair. I don't know what his scholarship yeah. offer was or what his monthly pay was or what Winthrop was giving him, but just as a high level conceptual thing, right? If you're not paying a living wage, I don't think you should be able to like massively restrict the mobility of players. I think that's a good pro player uh, rule to have in place, but maybe the numbers are a little bit. I'm actually right kind of curious, just quickly to ask now that we have our MC here, is the Bra Brazilian Academy players have contract protection? They, okay, so it's different in Brazil because it's an actual academy system. Right, it's yeah. not free floating teams. So, like they were, well, like you have four free floating teams, right? Kind of, but even then, they're subject to certain rules. So, like for example, Takui was playing down in our tier two, right? And he was playing for a non franchise org, but he was brought in by Kate Stars, but he couldn't play for Kate Stars, and he actually had to drop his Kate Stars affiliation to play for IDL. If not, he probably would have been playing tier two um, this last split. So they have different rules there because of the whole academy uh, thing. Okay, but uh, but do they appear in the GCD as well? If they are, so yeah. they should appear in the GCD, right? Since they are technically a check, academy a team. Yeah, you want to quickly check? The, I'm actually not that familiar with what goes. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Latin American teams, a hundred percent, I would be willing to bet maybe ninety eight percent they are not in the GCD if you're in tier two in Latin America. I cannot yeah, well, see that being the case. It's again. Like, it, Latam, I think, is more similar to North America now, right? Where or not? I would say it's even worse than North America. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that would be willing to do much sort like of regionals yeah. qualify into LRN yeah. and LRS, right? So yeah, 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 regionals are more like our tier three, our our qualifiers, where any team can just. I I would technically and... say like it's similar to EU to a certain degree with how the the regional system works, but then then you go into the. It looks like they are. Yeah, I'm seeing like I, I see like twelve names on every team, so it looks like they yeah. are GCD. Because it's okay, also so I also see I see like Rise Gaming and Tropa Ryzen in here and stuff. Yeah, so those are the non franchise. That are teams. the non franchise. They're also yeah. on yeah. the GCD. Yeah, because the franchise teams they they do swap players in and out of CD law and academy, right? So they must be locked into the contract to allow them to do that. Though. I'm I will assume though, or I'll I'll at least at the very least think that they are probably going to adopt something similar to what they do in Brazil with uh, in, a, in a system for next year. Because I don't think that they are going to just let everything go wild or not take anything from there. And I don't think I Brazilian so. owners probably are going to be happy if they also get taken away, things like that. So I probably think they are going to adopt something from that. Well, the other I thing so. is, and, and so. maybe this isn't the best, uh, maybe this isn't <laughs> the best for sustainability, um, but maybe with the with the promotion slot up for grabs now, you start to see a little bit more investment, and maybe you just get more people on the GCD under the current rule set. Uh, I don't know that that's the most sustainable of practices, but I mean, it, it happened under the promotion relegation system of the past. You know, who who's depends on who's willing to drop big bucks to see if they can make their way in, um, but while still spending smaller bucks than it would take to buy a spot straight up. Right. Right. All right. Well, 
we've we've beautifully transitioned yet again. We're talking about yeah, CBL yeah. Academy contracts. As good an opportunity as any to start talking about America's Challengers 2024. So for those who don't know, we talked about it a little bit at the top. America's Challengers is a new Tier 2 international tournament between all the regions in the Americas. So two teams from NACL, two teams from CB Lowell Academy, which is the Brazilian Tier 2 League, one team from the Northern Latin American League, and one team from the Southern Latin American League, Tier 2 once again, not the uh, not the LLA itself, the soon-to-be-dissolved LLA, uh, all going to compete here in a tournament Uh Feels like NACL are are kind of uh, already crowning themselves champions a little bit here. We'll talk with RMC about how likely that is. Um, but for anybody who doesn't know, so the tournament, the the participants are Dragonsteel, Furex Starforge, Vivo Keed Stars Academy, Pain Gaming Academy. Uh, those are the two from CB Law. From Latin America North, it is Fuego, and from Latin America South, it is WAP Esports. Uh, Okay, so CB Law Academy's first seed is Vivo Cade Stars Academy. And this team, they were not expected to win. Heck, they weren't even expected to make it to the grand finals, frankly. Uh, they started the split kind of rough, and they managed to scale up incredibly throughout the season. So their roster, uh, it's Tirin, Sarolu, Kise, Morteus, Telas. Tirin, Morteus, and Telas, so top and bot. Uh, they were playing last split, and they were actually the runners-up. So... Should have done well, right? Uh, but not so much. They brought in two new players in the jungle mid roles. And these are the players who I kind of want to focus on a little bit because they brought in uh, Sarolu and Kise. And they're very, very different players. Uh, Sarolu is a rookie. This is his first split on, and he won the whole damn thing uh, in his first split. And he had a big part in it. His champion pool is big, and it's weird. Uh, this guy was known as a Talon one trick uh, in solo queue. Like, he has another one trick, but I can't remember, but it's Talon and one other. Uh, and here in CB Low Academy, he whips out Talon and Rengar. And he wins the critical like Game 5 and Grand Finals with a Rengar pick, which caught Pain Gaming Academy completely off guard. Um, so, yeah, rookie, a lot of talent, you know, huge player. He also, by the way, uh, got benched partway through the split. And the org cited professional reasons. Uh, and then... They put him back and they, with their coach as a sub, they played out the last week. And then the first round of the playoffs, they played against a team called Kaboom Academy and lost. That put them in the lower bracket. And then they brought Sarolu back in at that point to try and carry through. Uh, Sarolu ended up meeting Kaboom Academy uh, in the lower bracket uh, against his his predecessor as well. Deity, who was on Kaboom Academy, used to be the Kate Stars Academy jungler. Sarolu beats him. So yeah, a bit of an epic story for Sarolu in this playoffs. Uh, Kise is not a rookie, but he's new to Brazil. He's an import, which is rare in CB Law Academy. And yeah, uh, they brought him in for most. And this guy, he is a tier one player. He was, y'all probably know him. He was at MSI 2022 representing OS. So he is definitely the biggest carry on this team. He's absolutely crushing everybody. Uh, mechanically, absolutely insane. And when you pair him with Sarulu's mechanics as well, uh, they become a big engine for this academy team, for this KTS academy team that allows the side lanes to be able to push out uh, quite a bit more as well. Um, and in terms of Tyrion, Tyrion's a bit more experienced. He's got CB Law experience in the top side. Uh, he's good for academy, struggles a little bit in CB Law. So a good veteran experience to tie this team together. And Morteus and Telas in the bot side, they were actually the star pieces for this Kate Stars Academy roster initially. They're being overshadowed a little bit by Sorolo and Kise, but Morteus is still the top AD carry prospect in a region known for the AD carries as well. So uh, definitely a, a huge carry in the bot lane and pretty lane dominant as well. Yeah, that's Skate Stars. And they they kind of surprised everybody kind of with how well they scaled up. I'm actually curious to see how much they've improved since we last saw them. Because they finished finals in patch 14, 15. So it's like three patches ago. Um, mm. Yeah, things have changed a lot Ooh, since then. A little bit. Was that the last majorly AD mid patch? I feel like. Yeah, that was. I think before, that was barely that, the introduction the, of Aurora. I think that was barely. the that was before yes. the that was before Fleet and uh, Absorb Life got got nerfed. So that, that interesting kind of, that tanked a yeah. lot of the like that tanked like Quirky actually, a little bit. Yeah. That tanked Tristana. And Tristana Quirky. They didn't get to play Aurora much because of the Aurora Chrono Break bug at that time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So. 
KC also it's won me. their, I don't know if they call it most valuable prospect there or not, but they, he won MVP for, uh, yeah. So as well, right? they, they do, they do individual MVPs for every game and Kise got like eight out of, he played 16 games. He got eight MVPs. Mm. Uh, that's 16 oh, games, wins damn. four losses. So he just dominated the MVP conversation. The Knicks, the second highest MVP vote was three MVPs, MVPs. So he almost tripled mm. that. Um, yeah, this guy absolutely cracked uh yeah very strong individual mechanical players but despite them being first seed they're actually not considered the strongest <laughs> cbl academy team coming in it's actually pain um who a lot of people expected to win the season they were insanely oh. dominant they lost five games throughout the entire split and funnily enough four of them were to kate stars <laughs> yeah. so they just have a block against kate stars i guess um and then besides that they just dominated in the playoffs Funnily enough, Payne Gaming dominated everything 3-0, and then they hit the grand finals, lost the game, and then looked lost in draft for game four, game five. So I think a lot of their the reason why they lost was kind of they they've never experienced full fearless. They experienced partial fearless. And first three games of fearless don't hit that bad. It's when you hit game four when you start losing bands and game five with no bands that things start to get really wonky. Uh so Payne Gaming Academy, uh they're Pain as an organization in Brazil it has the biggest fan base. They're the oldest org. They've been around forever. And they're actually really good at training up new talent. So they've they've managed to kind of generate fine talent and actually train them well. Uh, the only change between this Pain Gaming roster and the one that won last split is their top laner. Because their top laner, Yups, actually got loaned out to one of the CB Law teams. So it's almost like a promotion, except better because someone else is footing your bill. Uh, and then they had Hidan come in, who has former CB Law experience. Uh, he's a really good 1v1 duelist. Their mid laner, Quats, has been around for like his entire career in Pain Gaming Academy. But it's their jungle and bot lane that's oh, super spicy. Oh, that is a big name. I'm just looking at their real names. Uh, <laughs> Hang on. So we're uh, Quats's real name is... It's like yeah, five Augusto names Fernandez Barros de Freitas. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's taking up multiple lines on the on the yeah. on the wiki. Yeah, but but that's how some of the Brazilian names work like that. Uh, someone that watches a lot of football, that's how their names work, and that's why they actually have names like, for example, one of my favorite players is Kaká. They actually do it like that because it's easier to say than Ricardo Ricardo Nascimento or something like that, or like Pele. Edson de Nascimento Arantes de Nascimento Pere. It's easier to say it like that than the whole name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of them with longer names will have like uh, nicknames or shortened names sort of deal. Yep. Um, yeah. And they have to give nicknames. Like when Tukui came down, they called him Tutuku, uh, even though it's the same syllables. Um, but yeah, uh, Hiran and Quats are the more, like, I guess, experienced players, but they are jungle and bots, the interesting ones to watch for this team. Um, they're jungle, starting in Tatu, is basically like the Brazilian jungler equivalent of General Sniper. Like this kid, he's young. Uh, he is 18 now, but he first got picked up in 2022 when he was 15 years old. Uh, and when he got picked up, he was actually too young to play. So the team that being the most minors academy, they're not around anymore. I, um, yeah. I was actually just going to say, because I was looking at the at the wiki, you said mm -hmm. Sarolu was a rookie, right? He's a yes. year younger than Sarolu. Yes, so this is Sarulu's first split in tier two. He tried to qualify yeah. in uh, for split two or the their equivalent of summer split on a team called Team Ubu uh, through the qualifiers, didn't quite make it. But his talent was good enough that Kate Stars was like, okay, we want this guy. And they picked him up. Whereas Tatu, he got discovered like 2022 when he was 15. He was too young to play. His coach had to play for him until his birthday came around. He turned 16 and he could actually. <laughs> that's, that's a Bjergsen story that, right there, baby. Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, a, actually, yeah, Bjergsen. That's, that's, Bjerg. that's a talent level. Like that, that's a, when you know that he is the talent there. Let's go. Yeah, and incredibly mechanical. He's only gotten better over the years. Uh, he was kind of like ELO held on his former team, INTC Academy. They finished like ninth place, 10th place, ninth place. Um, but on Pain Gaming Academy, he's been completely unlocked. Uh, so, yeah, th this roster of Pain Gaming Academy, pound for pound, probably top two, top three in every single role. Um, and yeah, their, their jungle tattoo is absolutely terrifying. Their bot lane, Marvin and Giggs, another interesting duo. Marvin is kind of new as well. He just joined or he just made his debut this year in Split 1, so like spring equivalent. Um, and when he came in, th this kid was high fee. Like he loved his lane trades. Didn't always take the best ones, but he's leveled up massively now. Like he's kind of similar to Scary Jerry, but on an accelerated schedule in one year. 
Like his leading has gotten a lot better. He's really aggressive. Uh, we talked about Morteus for Kate Stars Academy as being like sort of the next big AD carry. And by the way, Brazil is known for the AD carries as well. Like so, when we say Morteus is like next up, he he could probably play in like tier one and in other minor regions. Uh, Marvin has been contesting him nonstop this year. Marvin actually beat him last split. And then this split, even in the laning, it was like neck for neck. So Marvin is like a huge talent. That kid's aggressive. If he thinks he can get a kill, he'll flash in, for better or for worse. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> this the ball laners are going to be fun from Brazil to watch. Uh, Pain Gaming Academy as well. Their macro is actually really solid. And I know a lot of people think of like Latin American teams or South American teams as just chaos engines. Uh, Pain is not a chaos engine. I, I actually think they play more organized than fear and some of the nacl teams so <laughs> Ooh. yeah um that one's you said then fear if... would you say the dragon steel because i would say they're one of our more no. organized yeah okay yeah no G giant steel is really good macro wise yeah. um i think they have the best macro this I say, i'll give sure. you that fear is disorganized i will not give that to you for dragon steel <laughs> yeah, <fear is> a <laughs> talent based. yep I, I didn't ask for dragon steel just just better than fear in terms of the macro uh, yeah, but Pain is actually a really organized team. Like, uh, if you watch their VODs, you'll see that it's very structured, what they want to do. Um, and you can usually tell what they're going to do um, at any given point because, yeah, they're going to make the the safest play or the, I don't want to say optimal, but, yeah, the logical play. So, yeah, I think CB Law as a whole uh, and how they stack up with NA. Mm, Kate Stars is a bit of a chaos engine. They can be kind of messy. So they're the wild card team. And then Pain is just a really stable team that I think think is actually going to be the big contenders if there is a non-NA team in the grand finals uh, my money would be on pain I could definitely so no backing for Latin America in the grand finals I hear not going to, <laughs> I don't think we're going to have very high opinions on the Latin American teams but we'll get not. into that yeah so I'm so I'm curious how like where you've seen is there a di when it comes to like champion pools, right? Because I know you talked about the fact that obviously a lot of these guys have been playing on a patch that's a lot, a lot different than the patch they're going to play on now. Are, yeah. are there any like certain champions that you feel like this the academy region, especially for like CB Lowell, really gravitates towards that you expect like NA to tr like, hopefully ban out or like have to watch for compared to our region? Because I feel like that's always an interesting thing, especially in like a fearless platform to see between regions, even in tier two. True. Yeah, that's fair. I um, I think Camille top is a thing that CB Lol does quite a bit, which I'm not seeing as much in NACL. Uh, other than that, I mean, individuals like Sarolu and Kise have very wide champion pools. Right. Um, but like regionally, if anything, I think the NACL is wilder and has a lot more picks that Brazil needs to watch out for. Brazil has actually played fairly standard. So like supports, engage supports all the way. Telas plays Seraphine. And in Brazil, that's like, wow, he plays a non-engaged support. Like, we are going down yeah. to the levels of, like, uh, Amumu and Galio down there. Um, so that kind of tells you how much they dislike Enchanters. Whereas, like, up in NACL, we've got, like, Senna Seraphine. That's, like, very, very common uh, as a matchup to kind of play against each other. Um, other than that, I mean, our top laners do like our carries a lot. It's not as common to see things like Horn, uh, Scion. Tyrion has a nasty Scion, though, but it's not as common, uh, regionally speaking. I noticed, so we talked a little bit of earlier about the patch that these are going to be on uh, and then the patch mm -hmm. that, that most of these playoffs are played on is, uh, I know, I've know i noticed Cerulu especially doesn't really play a whole bunch of the, the mages, at least from the, the matches I've gotten to see. Uh, Tatu mm -hmm. plays them a little bit more. He's got like, you know, the Lilias and the Zyras in there. Is that like, did they, did CBL Academy kind of move past the mages faster than perhaps the NACL did? The NACL also kind of clung on to them a little longer and harder than most of like tier one did too. So just curious, like how, how big on the mage jungles are you expecting these teams to end up? <laughs> CB Lol never really moved past the mages. <laughs> like in, in the <laughs> tier one, like Z Zyra and Brand were still very, very high prio. Yeah. Um, and still, like, I see no brand picks. games in playoffs from either of these guys. Ah, okay. So, uh, partially bands came through, but also, so Sarulu and Tatu both play brand, but they both prefer Lilia if we're talking like mm. AP junglers. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So th it's in their, it's in their champ pool. It's more just like what they want to do. Now, Sarulu has a, lot weirder champions because he plays things like the Talon, like the uh, Rengar, like the Skarner jungle that he whipped out as well. Um, 
he just has more options, right? So he doesn't play the mages as much because he doesn't have to uh, and or want to. And a lot of it depends on what Kisei wants to play as well, right? If Kisei wants to play a mage, then you're not going to see Sarolu without the mage quite as well, uh, quite as much, pardon me. And for Tatu, uh, Tatu does like his mages, right? Like he's got the Lilia, or he played a lot of Zyra. He still has uh, Talia as well. Um, he had a Nidalee during the regular season that I don't recall call if he played in playoffs uh, it might have been banned against him a couple of times as well uh so tatu again he has the option uh it's just really what the team needs out of him i wouldn't be surprised if we do see a zyra come through or a lilia though his lilia is very very scary meta or not cool. i'd also i'd i'd also be curious to ask so you talked about vks being kind of kryptonite for pain gaming like they they were able to <laughs> take the wins over pain yep. i know second seed coming into playoffs was furia who uh, lose in the upper finals, if I'm not mistaken, yep. uh, and then yeah, have their own five-game series with VKS that VKS comes out on top of. Is that – what's your read on that as somebody who followed these teams all season? Is it like VKS stepping up or Furia yes. collapsing? Uh, massively, it's it's K-Star stepping up. So Fury Academy was mm, – if we say the best teams like the gold standard, Fury was like the silver standard. Like they had really good macro, really good understanding of their compositions and how to execute their compositions, but mechanically, they weren't that good. I, I would say that Fury Academy, none of their players were top three in their role. Uh, so because of that, I mean, what they managed to achieve was actually quite uh, astounding. But if you were mechanically good enough, you could beat them. And for most of the split, that was just Pain Gaming Academy was the only team that was like that mechanically good that they could just outplay Fury and everything. And in the playoffs, in the lower finals, Kate Stars stepped up. And it's not like the macro from Kate, Kate Stars was that amazing. Unfortunately, Kate Stars Academy, they're a bit of a chaos engine. Their macro is not the cleanest, but they outplayed. And they just started winning fights against Fury Academy. So that's what I was talking about Kate Stars. Like they weren't favored. They kind of had the Cinderella run. They played the lower bracket the entire way. Um, and they just kept scaling up. And that's why between when they finished and when America's Challenger starts, I'm very curious to see how much Kate Stars Academy has grown in that time. Interesting. It, it almost feels like the interesting parallels, I guess for like, obviously, because like we're like the NA guys, right? So I'm going to keep harping yeah. back to the NA. Like it, it feels funny. like the interesting parallels of like pain and it'll be interesting to see like pain and dragon steel go up against each other in this group stage because you're talking about how you know, macro dependent both these teams are in a lot of their success. And then it sounds like if we see uh if we see Keith Stars and Fury Star Force go at it, we might just have like absolute pandemonium <laughs> from what you've been telling us. Like that game might just be flat out a little bit hands diffing, which you know what? Okay, if we're gonna compare them to NACL teams, pain is like Dragon Steel, incredibly strong lanes, good solid macro. Uh and Kate Stars Academy would be like blue otter, kind of okay. with a bit more time. Yeah. So I like you it. know, okay. Blue Otter and, and Fear had some interesting matches uh, <laughs> in NACL. I, I would love to see K Stars yeah. and Fear go at it as well. Yeah. So you're and all in on the Kisei. Mistaken, they will. You're on the Kisei hype then. Like, as like you think this is best, like hardcore best mid laner in, in CB Law Academy right now? No, no, because we had Takui play. In oh, CB okay. Law yeah, Academy. fair, fair, fair. fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'd say Kisei was probably like number two. Um, he was he was really, really good. Now on this case, there's Academy team, he will probably be the big carry. If you're looking for who's going to make the big plays, watch him and Sorolu. But the player I'm actually biggest on on that team is probably their AD carry, Morteus. I think Morteus is uh, really good. And he's like really a, a rookie. Like, I think he's basically tier one ready. Uh, they just need space for him to move up. And then actually, he. <laughs> so, Kate Stars, when Coach CL came over, he brought uh, Takui and Smalley with him from Europe. And Smalley originally was actually meant to be a placeholder for Morteus. They wanted to just get Morteus like adapted to the system and they're going to promote him. If not for the fact that Smalley just popped off and was second best AD carry uh, this split, Morteus would probably get promoted. <laughs> hmm. Okay. 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 Interesting. Well, somebody to watch out for in, in LCA South then, at the very least, uh, coming into to 2025, not yeah. to... Uh, not to look too much further ahead. Uh, <laughs> I know the, the CB Law folks are not uh, really looking forward to that too, too much. Um, there are some CB Law teams, at least. True. So, uh, with that, 
I, let, let's get into the Latin American team, so a little tiny okay. bit here. Let's talk oh, about no. the North first, which generally considered the stronger <laughs> of the two. Uh, we can talk about Fuego, and then we don't have to say WAP too much, at least until we get towards the yeah. end of the, at least until we get to the end. A, uh, a old podcast favorite here uh, on the Fuego team. Uh, it, for those who have been with the Salt Mine from the beginning, you'll remember ADD, a classic character coming back uh, nearly two years on now. The rest of the players new to me. Uh, RMC, you want to intro uh, Fuego for us a little bit, having a little bit more sure. passing familiarity? Sure, that, that's our Fuego and Lat uh, and LRN, uh, the Lat and North yeah. uh, tier two. The northern part of it. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, so Fuego is incredibly overpowered for this region. Like they stacked their roster. I agree. Yeah, they, this is not this is not an academy roster by any means. Like this is an actual like they, they've got a lot of tier one uh, experience on this team. So we talk about ADD in the top side, right? Like let's not forget ADD is like what five and a half years, so that 11 splits worth of tier one experience across multiple regions, LCK, LPL, uh, you know, uh, yeah, just all over the place. Uh, their jungler has also played, uh, Mataz has played about two splits in tier one as well. Um, their mid laner, uh, Zelt, uh, six splits of tier one, so about three years. Yeah. Their AD carry, about three splits. Uh, their support, another one with like five and a half years, so what's that, 11, 11 splits? Um, yeah, this this team was meant to win, always. This this was not a developmental team. Mm, and yeah. they won. They crushed it. Okay, so LRN and LRS have a different format than North America or CP Law. Instead of like regular season and playoffs, they have uh, regular season into groups into playoffs. So they have like three uh, oh. sort of... Yeah, yeah. I, I was looking um, into that. So the groups are, they're groups of three and you play a single round robin. Am I understanding that yes, right? Yes, but they're best of three. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so That's they, they play best of one. to me, but... <laughs> it's a sure. really weird format, yeah. I don't yeah. disagree with that. Yeah, it is kind of odd, but so they play best of ones in the uh, regular season, and then they play best of threes in the groups, and then they play best of fives in the playoffs. So they get a, a lot of games in the, the whole variety. Fuego dropped a total of one game. All split through all three stages. Fuego dropped one game, and that's it. Like yeah. they are, yeah, they are absolutely insane. They 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 are cracked and they are incredibly developed uh, individually. Their players as well. Okay, so ADD, we know him, right? He played at NACL as well. This guy's a globe trotter. He's been everywhere. Uh, the other two big pickups were for them, or the two big focuses was their bot lane, uh, Virus FX, uh, AD carry. Apparently, this guy has. Uh, we mentioned his experience in tier one, but on top of that, like he's got a big following as well. He is yeah. uh, a defending champion from 2023 LRN on Bandits Gaming. So yeah, he didn't start the split for Fuego. Apparently he wasn't available, but as soon as he was available on the 10th game, they snapped him up immediately to, to play for them. Uh, and then their support, Baula. This guy is a, another like very interesting uh, player. Um, he's got a ton of experience, right? He's played uh, a lot of tier one. Um, he's never, he's been to Worlds and MSI. He's been to international events, but never as a winner. And apparently that's something they troll him about. Uh, he's been invited by the broadcast team to be a guest, an analyst. I think like double lift when he did make Worlds sort yeah. of situation. <laughs> but his was more consistent because he has never done it. <laughs> True. <laughs> I love that TDS is flaming LRN. <laughs> hey, I, can, uh, I, I have to, at the very least, do it because I feel like it's on my, it's my national pride to flame them. That's fair. I have to um, look for that. Yeah, you do. And I'm glad you're the one doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, but this guy, Baula, he's known as like a huge shot caller, a uh, very smart guy. Um, and he is basically tier one ready. He's played a lot of time in tier one, as we kind of talked about. Um, like between, I'd say like 2017 to 2022. Uh, he was mostly in tier one. So he's only kind of fallen out recently. Uh, this guy's known for his Nautilus play. If it's open, he'll pick it. So, hey, he, he's not afraid. Like, you're not going to be able to counter yeah. it. Like, he doesn't care if you know that he's going to pick it. Uh, but yeah, this team was just made to dominate, and they did so. Now, their playoffs, because as we mentioned, they only dropped one game. It wasn't in playoffs. They've not played full fearless. They've played half fearless at best. They went 3-0 every single time. So I don't know if they know how to drop when you start dropping bands because that's what happened to Pain. Don't forget, Pain, they 3-0'd their way, Grand Finals lost because they didn't know how to drop it. Um, yep. Fuego, 
I am worried is going to be the same situation. Well, I mean, and that's just assuming, not to get too presumptuous here, but that's assuming that they can get to games four and five against some of the other teams in this tournament. Like, from from what I hear around the NA scene is, like, Latin America North teams will, like, scrim against, you know, some of these LRN teams will scrim against, yeah. like, NACLQ teams, like collegiate teams, like tier three teams. Yep. And even in yep. those scrims, they tend the LRN teams tend to not do great. Uh, Fuego definitely appears to be a bit of an <laughs> exception. I haven't heard anything about Fuego in those sorts of scrims specifically, but the reputation of the league is not great yeah. <laughs> as far as their track yeah. record up against NA talent. And uh, I'll, and you know what? I'll, I'll buy in with your hype RMC and I'll put CB law Academy <laughs> in there too. Uh, I don't, so I, I worry about how competitive the Latin American teams can really be. Fuego looks like they're probably their best hope. Um, I'll leave it up to TDS if we want to bring back some old ADD memes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if that's the best hope, I have absolutely <laughs> no hope. Uh, I'll just put it like that. I So here's the thing, and this has always been my thing with Latin America, particularly in the northern part, because I feel like South is much... Like, South is weird, because I think that South suffers because of its position, not because of its actual way of playing. Yeah, they're playing and I'll the get NA into that rough, later. Right? Yeah, that's that's yeah. the thing. I'll, I'll get into. We'll get into that later. But Latin America North has a problem that they. I don't think Latin America has ever, or the uh, Latin America North has never been a region of teams. It's been a region of players. I think they, there's been great, great players in Latin America North, but the teams have yeah. never followed suit to that. So I, I, I would be able, I, like, I'm willing to make arguments for a couple of players that I think could have played in in LCS from Latin America North. Like, I think they were good enough to play in Latin America North and LCS, and I think they had the quality for that. The problem is that the teams have never followed suit to that. Doesn't matter yeah. how dominant the team was, it doesn't matter if it was Leon Gaming when they were the most dominant team in Latin America, it doesn't matter if it, if it was Raven7 when they took the mantle on that. It's never been a team thing, it's been a player thing. And that's also why Jose Diodo, I think, can make the jump to Latin America and then also to NA and then back into Latin America because it's been a player thing. And it's the same thing here with Fuego. I think the players are not necessarily bad, but the team thing has never worked out in Latin America. And I'm not sure if it's because the way that they try to play the map is just completely wrong and they don't realize that. I don't know if their way that they want to try and play picks is weird because their champion pools are way too... Like, I feel like Latin America has a thing where their picks are always just pigeonholed into whatever three champions everyone plays. Like, if we think that NA is bad, I think Latin America is worse in that regard. <laughs> so, yeah, like, there's there's multiple things that I feel like affect the way that the Latin American North teams play. And I think it's going to be a big demonstration coming into this. I think Fuego, I do agree, was the, probably the best team that they could have sent from Latin American North in that sense, but at the same time, I don't think they're going to make big waves considering what they have in their power because I don't think they win any lane. Like I don't, I realistically don't think that anyone from from the team is better than any of their opponents. Not even from the uh, Latin America South part. Yeah, uh, you know what? Okay, so when I introduce the team, I, I'm being positive. I'm presenting them best light. Uh, my my personal opinion, though, I, I'm agreeing with TDS, man. I don't think Fuego knows <laughs> what's, like they they don't know Arsenal Men right now. Uh, their macro yeah. is hell. <laughs> like I was watching their early games, and I was just like, how are we ahead right now? Yeah. We are literally just winning on hands, and then they go around to mid game. Okay, well, it it, it hurts because. If I say like pain is a team where you you know what they're gonna do because they do what should be done, Fuego is the opposite. They don't do what should be done. They're just sitting their lanes, pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and then they finally group up for an objective. There's no vision set up. There's no like uh, trying to take control of lanes. They just walk in there. I have literally seen them walk in four separate yeah. directions into an objective, and the other team's just right there, ready for the fight. And the problem is their hands are better. So great, you caught one of us walking in. You can't kill us fast enough. <laughs> this team just rolls you yeah. over, and I'm just like, okay, like I understand this is a very, very good team for your region individually, but macro, I, I don't think you've heard the word. Like, no. I don't know. And I think, I think this may be a, um, what is it called? I think this is maybe a, a symptom of 
Latin America nor like I Latin America North has never been a region of a lot of te- and even in te- in other team games like has never been a region of teams dominating in team games that came from the, the northern part. Once again, there's players that see. I'm oh, sorry, I'm dying. My region is bad. Um, <laughs> he, he, he's just showing us the LRN, you know. Oh. Yeah, he's dying. <laughs> All right, like, well, Derek... there's oh. players that exceed. Just quickly to finish, there's players that exceed, but they are just simply not going to deliver. And I think it's a symptom of coming in from other games. We just simply want to butt heads and win in the most straightforward manner possible. There's not sure. a lot of thought process behind it. Which, when you look at the other side of Latin America, because once again, there's two one north, one south. The southern part, actually, you can be, feel proud about it because they do things that are quite good. And I think yeah. talent wise, uh, I think there's a perfect segue to it. Talent wise, I think Latin America South will always, or at the very least, most of the time, have much better players than North. The problem is once again their location. They are way too screwed over by the distance between them and NA. If they were closer, I can assure you that we would be talking more about Latin America South players being able to participate in NA LCS. Because there's been really, really good players from that part that haven't got the chance because of the distance. Damn. Well, that is a perfect segue here, TDS. Let's get into the team that some of our NACL casters are going to say some out-of-pocket stuff about, let me tell you. This is WAP Esports. <laughs> since for what a player. So what a player, Esports. This team coming in from the south, I and you know because of that server difference that you brought up, TDS. I was really under the impression that LRS would be the weaker of these two. It sounds like you have a little bit more hope for them. Uh, curious where you're on this RMC. So this this roster looks like is Thorin, QQ, more DD, Kindless, and Shuhari. Yeah. So this is an interesting one because. Okay, WAP, WAP has an epic story behind them as well. Uh, they, this organization is really, really cool. Uh, we'll start <laughs> with that. They are based out of Rosario in Argentina. So football fans would recognize, or soccer, sorry. F- football fans will recognize the name of Rosario, Argentina, because that's the hometown of Messi. That's where he was born. Uh, Di Maria came from here as well. Uh, and yeah, basically they're, they're a sports town. And so WAP was developed as uh, a sort of initiative by the city as well to, to kind of promote esports because they're already like sort of a sports home. So it's a really cool thing. And the the org had the mentality of developing new players. Like they went, screw the results. We are going to find new players and develop them. If we win, we win. Great. If we don't, no big deal. So they've actually never really won anything till now. And in 2021, actually, uh, they were playing in the Argentina National League and everything. And then in 2022, they got relegated because obviously they didn't care about their results. They cared about developing players. Uh, Now, teams dropped out in 2023. And the LMF, which is the Argentina National League, basically went, okay, we will let you back in because the team dropped and you're technically next on the docket. But you have to stop trolling us. You've actually got to try. (laughs) 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 So what went... Fine. <laughs> we'll actually get some older players in and look for results instead. And here we are, right? 2023, they placed, uh, I think it was top four finish. Um, and then 2024, they actually just won it all. And that was very unexpected for anybody who follows that region. Uh, not only because WAP as an org had a, a reputation for not playing well, but also in the regular season, remember, they have regular groups and playoffs. In regular season, this team plays fifth which barely qualified them uh, because it's, you know, top three, top four from each side going to groups. Uh, Then they finished second in groups, which is the cutoff mark because top two move on to playoffs. So they went from fifth to second to finally winning it all in the playoffs. And even in the grand finals, when they're up against primary game, they were like, oh, WAP's not going to win this. Like all the casters were like, oh, they're going to lose. I think there were only two casters who were like, oh, WAP's going to (laughs) win. But they won it. It's It's a huge surprise. So... Yeah, this, this one's a, a bigger upset than even Cage Stars Academy was in Brazil. Now, the entire roster actually swapped out throughout the split. The only player who played from start to finish was Kindless, uh, their AD carry. So 
kind of weird. Apparently, it's very common in LRS. When I was talking to uh, one of their casters, Fahrenheit, he was saying that they, there's like a big break in the middle uh, due to like MSI and whatnot. So during that period, there are a lot of roster shifts. So having the yeah. roster change was not surprising. It's, it's very, very common, apparently. Uh, but the players they brought on was very, very interesting. So we'll, we'll start in the t top lane, uh, Thorin. So Thorin was always supposed to split time. Uh, actually, I can't remember the other player's name because let me pull up the other. I saw that look, Quax. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what did Quax want to well, say? Let's, let's, let the Zoomer live. Thorin, Thorin may share a name with uh, somebody else in, in this scene, <laughs> I assume is what he's thinking about. <laughs> There's more than one Thorin, Thorin in Lolly Sports. Uh, <laughs> no, no, th th this is a good one, Quax. I promise. Like th this Thorin's actually cool. I remember. I remember getting. I won't get blocked on Twitter by this one. Is what you're saying? We might. Let's yep. see. Let's wait and see how the podcast goes. <laughs> <laughs> you're blocked on Twitter by Thorin. I'm blocked on Twitter by Thorin. I I'm blocked oh, on Twitter by Thorin. Hundred percent. Yeah. Ooh, yo, oh, TDS. Man. We're the last survivors, bro. <laughs> oh, not for yeah, a while. Are know. you sure you're the survivors? Just wait for the next sure wave, brother. Uh, <laughs> are you sure you're on the right okay, side? Okay, let's get back into the, let's no, get back, I actually don't let's get back to I don't think I am, as RMCs okay. to quote RMC. The good I don't have enemies. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the latter I'm Thorin. So they, they start to split with Psydux, and Psydux and Thorin are both sort of rookies, so they were always going to split time between the two of them. Uh, so Psydux started out, but Thorin came in, and Thorin did really well. And Thorin's apparently a player who's been around for a little bit. There's always been a lot of potential, but not quite realized but on this roster on this split he started doing really really well uh so they kind of kept him on and so this is kind of like his first full split uh playing out in tier two he's got some very interesting picks in the top lane uh he likes to play things like ergot uh he's got a mordekaiser pick which yes i know all the brazil mordekaiser means this ain't brazil this is lrs so mordekaiser a little bit weird he plays things like Garen and Darius before Garen became meta because of the whole Nasus thing. Um, yeah, he likes his lane matchups and his uh, dominance in, in lane. So uh, he's got clutch factor within the region, and he was actually a big part of why they ended up winning was because he was winning a lot of those 1v1s in the top lane and applying a lot of pressure. Um, apparently, they call him El Torito sometimes because it's similar to Thorin, like Lil Bull. And apparently, there's some meme about uh, El Torito and Chad's. I don't know, TDS, maybe you know better about this. El Torito what? Sorry. <laughs> El Torito, like a uh, little bull. Yeah, no, I I know what what is El Torito, but I want like you said with El Torito and what is that? Uh, a, it's a apparently a meme about like it's like another way to call something like a Chad because it's some sort of meme. Oh yeah, because he's a bull. Yeah. Okay. That's simple. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. It's Would you bull. call him a certified freak? Could be could oh be maybe God. also actually I want to look out something. <laughs> Go to YouTube for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, hey, this is that was my generation. All right. That's, how old's that song now? Go, go to show his age right now, man. Am I really? Come on. That song came out four years ago. I was I was in my early twenties. <laughs> four years, bro. An entire bro, generation bro. of esports players have retired. <laughs> Damn. Right, you know when when half these yeah. players were fourteen. <laughs> Not not these rosters. The latter rosters are older. So That's true. yeah, the like I can assure you, Fuego is probably around our generation. Yeah, Fuego's average age is uh, twenty five, twenty four point eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and then Wops I'll is call that my generation. So. Sure. Yeah, but Th Thorin is on the younger side. He's he's more of a rookie. Yeah. So um, he's sort of like the the guy who's. Um, you might want to keep your eyes on in LRS in terms of development. Uh, then their jungler QQ Moore has been around uh, for a long time as well. He's actually gone yeah. to was it Worlds MSI? Uh, MSI MSI 2017, I think it was. Yes, I was actually Isurus. trying to confirm that as well because I remember he went to MSI. I didn't remember when, but yeah, yeah, yep. like uh, he's, he's been he around was a long time. This guy around that actually is when I was a, when I was a lad. <laughs> that's that's all the that's <laughs> that all is the more that than really is the last generation. That's <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, kindless the AD carrier who's who also played the split was on that same roster with QQ Moore, oh, and that's right. why QQ Moore uh, kind of joined in, right? Because they they've known each other for a long time. Apparently, QQ Moore originally actually was half coaching on this team, like he wasn't meant to play. But they were like, okay, we should probably try and win this. And so Kiki Moore's like, okay, I'll step in and play. <laughs> and Kiki Moore, uh, he's a very interesting guy because he is good enough to be playing tier one. Uh, and in fact, he opted to leave tier one. He chose to. The team didn't drop him. He went, 
I'm done with this because he's from Chile and he wanted to go back to Chile and he was like, yes. too far to Mexico. So he was just like, screw tier one, man. I'm done with this. I'm going home and I'm playing from home and I'll just play every once in a while. And so that's why he's in tier two. <laughs> so he's another sort of like tier one should be a uh, player. And he's a, a huge in-game shot caller, especially for the early game. Another player with some interesting picks. He plays Rek'Sai and Volibear in the jungle, uh, among other things. Ooh. His Rek'Sai draws a lot of bands uh, in LRS. So. Well Goes to show, goes to show where he, the time that he was playing, right? Because 2017 Rexai, <laughs> much more logical than today's, than some of today's players. But yeah, uh, I, I just want to follow up with that. I think I, I just with Cucumber particularly, like he went to MSI. I, th if I went, if I went and said things about junglers in in Latin America, I think it was pretty much mm -hmm. Odie and Cucumber, the ones that you really. Yep call out when latin america had like there when it was north and south before the merger it was north odie south cucumor and then when it came together once again it was odie and then cucumor and that's one of the big things that happened with also the change in location because with the merger everyone went to mexico there were a ton of players that from the south just simply didn't want to go the distance because it's not like in europe once again like from mexico to chile it's probably a what four or five hour flight I think around that, maybe even I'm more. Actually, I think that, I think it sounds it's, right. Yeah, no, it's probably around that. It's probably more because I know that from Colombia to Argentina, it's around eight hours. You're swapping continents. It's got to be. <laughs> so, so it's actually quite a yeah. It's quite a long distance. So, if it was like Europe, probably there wouldn't be much issue. But since it's much bigger distance, there were quite a few players that actually just didn't feel like it was worth it enough to leave like their countries just to go play like that. And Cucumor. Did it for a while, but he was no exception at the end. And I think he's going to be quite an interesting jungler because he's really... He's on the cerebral side, but he's not afraid to go take risks if he thinks that that can put the team ahead. Which I think it's important for this sort of of underdog team where you need to be willing to take the, the, the bad traits. Even if they are bad, you need to be willing to take them because that's the only way that you can actually take a fight against the better teams. Yeah, I fully agree with TDS. By the way, I just quickly Google Chile to Mexico flight time, and from apparently from Santiago, it's eight hours forty five minutes. I wow. yeah yeah you're gonna That's, get some yeah, yeah, as a person who uh, as a person distance. who went from as a person who earlier this year went from Minnesota, so top of the United States, practically Canada, uh, to Santiago. Uh, it was a so it was I did not think I would be talking about my flight experience, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, we had to go to New York, and then down to Chile, it was 16 hours. And let me tell you, never, ever, 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 I could swear, right? Never, you ever, swear. Yeah. Oh, fucking, oh, fucking take the flight that I took, because I, I, I shit you not. Yeah. The flight attendants gave us, like, a, like, you know those, like, water cups that the nurses would give you when you were, quote, unquote, sick? They gave us, <laughs> quote, unquote. Th they gave us one of those one for a 16 hour flight and we were like we we seriously looked like raisins at the end of the and, and like going to sleep was the hardest part because we had to go to sleep when we seriously felt like our like life was like draining from our faces because we were so dehydrated never no and never ever take that flight that i took because it's uh it's a mistake let me just well, right. Right. well, we uh we just lost an uh, airline sponsorship. Well, That's anyway, <laughs> I, I, I was just gonna say thank you for googling that RMC and for tanking the weird ads you're gonna get now for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> now that you googled those flight times. That's fine. I was looking flights to Brazil and stuff like that before. <laughs> yeah. Hey, who knows? Maybe we see RMC over there in the Americas finals, in the Challengers finals. So true. He was already. I wish, man. I, I was actually googling it because. I, I'm a pain fan, uh, and I can't get a jersey to save my life. They don't ship outside Brazil. They don't oh. even ship to the U.S. So, oh, shit. like, yeah, I was like, what are the odds I can go down one year and, you know, just, <laughs> like, see, see get, right get Brazil, bring, bring us in. Actually, low, man. <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious if they ship to here since it's Latin America, technically. Uh, TDS, yeah, if you can get it, I would pay for you to ship it up to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, try and see actually what he's happens. Gonna, <laughs> he's going to bring us I'm a giant. all these okay, yeah, uh, goods. All right, let's talk a little bit now, about though. Shuhari and DD before we get too off track. Yeah, okay. So DD, their mid laner, uh, he is a newer player. He hasn't had as much success. He's mostly been in tier two kind of mediocre finishes, but this 
split, he actually uh, won uh, won it all. And it's actually really interesting because he started the the tournament on a team called Meta Gaming, uh, which was actually the favorites to win the entire tournament. And then Meta Gaming right, cool. dropped him in the regular season. I craft the regular season that break period. They dropped him, and WAP went what? Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> and he ended up actually beating his former team, Metagaming, in the playoffs. <laughs> so in the first round. So it's kind of poetic justice. Uh, as a player, or as a person, he apparently is quite a, a shy guy who likes anime uh, and kind of wants to be protagonist of the whole story. So he wants to be a playmaker. Uh, I'm going to be honest, though, watching him play, I don't know but call him necessarily a playmaker. I think he, he's got the hands for it but it felt more like he was janitor than playmaker you know what i mean like he'd come in and clean up the fight rather than actually kick the fight off um yeah so he's got hands but i feel like in more chaotic fights uh i feel like he struggles to track everything and so his his uh contributions early on in the fight are less than he can bring towards the end of the fight uh and that brings us to their ad carry kindless who is the big carry of this team right we yeah. talked about him and kukimor 2017 isaris go to MSI. Uh, he's played in tier one quite a bit. Uh, as recently as like 2022, um, he played as well uh, in LOA. Played second while that was happening. So, you know, he, he's definitely got the hands. Uh, this guy is more your stereotypical AD carry team fighter, like very stable in lane. Um, and then just get him to the team fight and he will just pump out the damage for the most part. Uh, as a team, WAP plays around the AD carry. Like, Kindness is 72.7% K uh, kill participation, the highest on the team. So, yeah, the, the team really kind of revolves around this bot lane for the most part. Uh, Shuhari, his support, is kind of underrated in his own region. Like, in LRS, people don't really think of Shuhari as particularly good. Uh, the stats, actually, though, he looks pretty good, I thought, statistically. So, I guess he's not very flashy, just kind of plays whatever the team needs him to do. Uh, he's Another guy who's actually been in tier one, uh, kind of going between tier one, tier two. Uh, he's got some solid finishes in the LOA, so tier one. But people just kind of say, oh, he's got a good AD carry. But to me, it's like, if you always get good AD carries, and obviously like there's something that good AD carries like about you, right? <laughs> That's why they keep picking you. So uh, I, I really like this pairing the bot lane of Kindless and Shuhari. I think it, it works out really well, where Shuhari just kind of helps uh, Kindless get to the point where he can start taking over games uh, and popping off. Now, Shuhari's KDAs, his stats are terrible. <laughs> his his KDA is bad because this guy, to put it nicely, he's very selfless. Uh, he will do what the team needs. Uh, to put it harshly, the guy engages with his face. And he does not very huh. often see fights that he doesn't like. So <laughs> he will yeah, be the first one. player in. too, right? I, I definitely way, saw a few yes. of those. Yeah, so he's got some interesting champs as well. Uh, pretty much all engaged though, right? Like this, this guy played a game of Lulu and I, I thought it was great because he didn't try and face tank for a change. So obviously he has the hands to not die, but he feels like his goal is to be first one in and first one back to fountain, I guess. So if his KDA is good that game, if he has low deaths, WAP is crushing it. If it's high, you can't tell if it's good or bad game because yeah. Um, yeah, he does have a pocket Skarner pick uh, that comes through and from... What I've heard from some people, he might have some other pocket picks that he didn't show. I'm actually very curious to see if it comes out. Uh, but yeah, he Sk Skarner's kind of odd. Um, and he was devastating on it, especially on red side near the walls. He was absolutely punishing like jungle ganks and everything trying to come in. So I don't foresee Skarner bans coming through necessarily. Like I don't think teams need to, to ban it. But if you're not ready for it, it might give you a bit of a, a surprise. Uh, and for WAP, unlike Fuego, Fuego just crushed. So I thought they got sloppy. And maybe it's because they were so good for their region. WAP, on the other hand, looked better to me macro-wise. Still not as good as NA or Brazil. But it looked like they had a better idea of it. And more importantly, they looked like they knew how to play from ahead or behind. Like, they didn't just crush their lanes and kind of roll from there. So if they fall behind, you know, I, I think they would put up a better showing than Fuego. But I think it would still be pretty big upsets. I think they've got the lowest... Oh, no. Pure exists. I was going to say, they have the lowest gold difference at 15 of all the teams entering this tournament. It's only plus 567, which for a... Team that won. A first seed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of low. Uh, but then Fear exists, and Fear managed to qualify with a 40% win rate. So <laughs> <laughs> they actually have a negative gold difference at 15. Uh, yeah, Fear, Fear is a whole different Works list. out. I, I will say though with them, and one thing that I want to grab from from the way that they qualified into this is that I think that they are one, or one of no, like they are 
a team that adaptation wise is one of the better ones that you can look at not yes. because like they make quick adaptations or like they can make quick adaptations don't get me wrong but like the prep that they ha are able to put into some of the games is really really good not only from uh i would say a, a big band phase or anything like that but the fact that they take things really from their previous mistakes into action yes. i think it's a really positive thing and i think with they are the team that if given the right amount of prep and and training which i think they are going to get going into this one with the other teams and things like that i think they may be a, a bit of a surprise like i think they are not the best marker team they are not the best hands team but they are certainly one of the teams that if you give them the resources to prepare for things they will be willing to bring things out because they are willing to play different things they are willing to try things out in the map they don't shy away from trying to fight you but they also are uh, smart about how they try to approach certain fights like they are not going to just blindly dive into your face like fuego like they will be trying to set up certain things to allow for kindless to succeed as much as possible and i really really think that they are going to be a surprise uh depending on on obviously how the first game looks but i think they are they can be a really good surprise for latin america don't think they are going to win it but i feel and i'd be willing to say that i think they can make top four Ooh, top four so that would require them beating um, probably um one of brazil or any probably fuego and then yeah one other team so which one do you think they're gonna beat tds which team do you think they're gonna take out i i like i can go for the safer one and say oh, of course it has to be a brazilian team but <laughs> i so i'm going to be wild here and i'm pretty sure that okay, i'm going to okay. get called out i think they can beat fear what, because of one particular thing, I feel fear has a, a a really weird problem that they get way too much in their heads sometimes. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> and, I and I can and I can see them I can see them struggling when things just simply don't go their way. I can see them having some problems with so, especially with teams that I think they will believe they are much better than. I, I feel like if they get like if they lose one game against any of the quote-unquote lower ranked teams from the other regions i can see them just completely uh pacing uh pacing out of it just because I, I just feel like they have not mental blocks but difficulties adapting to certain stuff when things go don't go their way i could definitely see that i just think it's going to be tough for things to not go their way 100%. against some of these weaker teams i just think a hundred percent i don't I know man fear fear some really bad stuff <laughs> They do have some really bad stats. I mean, they've played a lot of games against Dragon Steel, though. You got to remember, they played two series against Dragon Steel. That's tough. Mm, true. Um, true. You know, they played against FlyQuest multiple times. It's also tough. I don't know. I I think I don't know, but maybe maybe I'm dismissing them a little bit too out of hand. I do think though, like yeah, you know, it, it CB Law, based on what I hear about how they're able to perform and how reliable of a talent pipeline they are. I'm going to be favoring them by default against LRN and LRS both. Yeah, uh, I agree. think Dragon Steel is going to yeah. be able to bring a bucket and a mop. Uh, and <laughs> uh, I think uh, the rest are going to be... that. I, I can see the questioning for fear, but I think they're going to be in a similar category. I think they'll be able to take WAP. Well, I what's kind of interesting... Oh. Sorry, is that when I spoke no. to some of the casters in um, the Latam region, they actually, most of them favor Fuego over WAP, which... That would be my okay, default I, assumption. You said the Latin American yeah. analysts think that? Yeah. Okay. That would be my I, default I, I think just it has of to do. server proximity. I also think it has to do with tier one. Like the, the most of their players of like three out of the five players are X tier one, or actually four out of the tier uh, of their players are X tier one. And so I, I can see them favoring that them just because of that Isn't idea. That and Fuego I do think too, we go no, no, no I, uh, yeah, I mean, Fuego. Oh, Fuego. Okay. Like, for Fuego, yeah. four out of the five players are X tier one. Oh, so five I, out of five. I, yeah, all of them yeah, have yeah, tier yeah. one experience. I gotcha. yeah. yeah, actually, I think five of them. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. like, they they are an actual tier one team just in disguise to uh, in Latin America, right? Yeah. So, like, I, I can understand why they favor them in that sense. The problem is that for me, there's a reason why they are no longer in tier one anymore and i'm not and i'm not trying to like i don't want to attack them as much as possible but their finishes in tier one apart from bola isn't this already that great either like add was not a a star stud at top later we are discovering out of nowhere and here comes my ADD slander he is a top laner that passed through different regions because he didn't have a place in the previous region that he just left 
Like that's the I reason love having why TDS he's not on this there, podcast, so. man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I feel just, bad bashing on LRN and LRS, but TDS pop off, King. <laughs> uh, nah, I, I, this is the tough. This is tough love. I want to see my region succeed, but I know that I won't see them succeed, and at least until I'm like 44, and that's in 20 years. So like, I, until then, I'm going to be the to- the the one that gives them the tough love and hope that they can prove me wrong. But uh, like, I just don't see where they are better than the others. And that's where I'm struggling at. That being said, they have two Colombians, so by default, I will support them. <laughs> but apart from that, uh, that's it. <laughs> I'm just excited to see how much of this knowledge that I just soaked up actually plays out. I know. I mean, right? like, yeah. I, I'm, obviously, it's like, be like I'm going to be a like... tournament, and everything's going to be out the window the second <laughs> yeah, they start yeah, playing. Yeah. Yeah. Paulo. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, I I want NA to go one too. Like, I'm not gonna say every time like that's not what I want. But I, I'm sure. I I've I've enjoyed listening to everything RMC's had to say, and of course, TDS is usual. I mean, I'm used to this TDS, so it's fun to hear it. <laughs> I own. I would like to see. You know what? I'll I'll even I'll betray the region a little bit here. I would like to see a NA versus CV Law final. I think that I would think be a great. That. that would be a great beginning of our new relationship. <laughs> then our new I'll, arranged I'll marriage. Honest. I think I if think we're, we're able that. to, you know, come out here with a little bit of equity to start things off, I think uh, I think that's going to be good for everybody. I think that's going to be good uh, for for building building bridges with each other. Uh, by the way, we already welcomed TDS to the region. RMC, you're on here as well. Welcome <laughs> to our region. We're all one now. Yeah. We're all one we're, now, man. Yeah. It's, you are already. Are you I am from it. I know. I know you're literally yeah, from yeah. NA, but your coverage has been elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. See, my, my so... body belongs to NA, but my heart belongs to Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Well, and now both. So it's fine. And now they both belong, belong to the same region, baby. To so NA. let's go. Works out. You know, the funniest part about hearing everything like Gordo, you know, saying about building this relationship, like I, I, I was very, I, I, not as much as I used to anymore because I've been invested more in league as an esport but like i used to be really big in counter-strike oh, and Gor- yeah. gordo gordo you're so naive oh you're no so, like we're gonna hate each the, other don't get me wrong but yeah, like, okay okay because like NA, but i want to have Brazil that kind of been... like I, I i want that i want that you know you're gonna get it it's gonna be a <laughs> listen it's gonna be a it's gonna be a uh it, it's gonna be a toxic relationship but i i want 100%. i want that <laughs> More than I it already want. is. It already is. Yeah, I hope that it like, actually turns out like But in a different like way, Valorant. you know, like in a, not in a I don't okay, think it's not in a making Brazil so, irrelevant. So way. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like Brazil dares to love and they dare to hate. Like they sure. Yeah. When when we play against when Brazil plays against NA, you are gonna like that toxicity is gonna be like yes. out the out the wazoo. But yep. when they go to Worlds and when they represent Americas, right? If a Brazilian team gets knocked out or isn't there, they will switch to supporting. The, 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 North or the rest of the America. And I, I want to have like a real rivalry. I don't want them to just show up and get smacked by us every time. I, I think that's going to suck. And, uh, I mean, the, the, the CS fan of me actually wants us to just slap them every time. But I mean, that's, that's because, <laughs> that's because it, that there was like a... Slayer, it's gonna go go so back awkward. to your Tier 1 Slayer. Here in Tier 2, <laughs> Brazil has so a chance. Awkward. That's our whole no, there was like now. There was like a four-year window in Counter-Strike history where we were just getting walloped by all yeah, of Brazil. I was, it was, I was the going to say, like, ever. It's, not like, it's not like you ever experienced, or you didn't experience the amount of Brazilian just completely dominating the NA scene in CS. They shit on us for like four that. years. It was like, oh, it was, it was bad. Where, bro, know, how many Rob? years has NA been beating Bear Brazil? <laughs> all yeah, of fair, all fair, of right. the years. <laughs> every yeah, that, you year. know what? You, you guys are I'm sorry, right, RMC, but like, I'm but just every saying, year, like... every time, <laughs> literally every time, Japan beat us once. Brazil never. Like, it's... <laughs> you guys are right. You guys are definitely right. But if, if any Counter Strike fans that are listening to this and they remember the Luminosity TL <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, game like, regret on Mirage, if we lose, then uh, but it's your cost remembers. I will say though, if we get if uh dst uh DS, ds i i hate DSTL. their name maribel dragon seal just dragon seal. maribel, maribel. <laughs> yeah i'll just keep calling the barrel if maribel loses against the any team i i am just ready for the amount of of laughing that will come from brazil like i i'm actually going to be enjoying that one so much and i will say i think it's going to be a final again between brazil and na and i don't think it's going to be so, as man. one-sided as people think i think pain can I think it's Pain, by the way. I think Pain can fight against DSTL. Will I think they win? No. But I think it's going to be much better than most 
almost everyone thinks about it. All right. I'm with you, TDS. I'm with you. I'm I'm with it too. Let's Let hope it happens. Uh, maybe I want it. I want it. I'm just I'm. Just, I know. I'm we just... listen. We can want ah, it for right. now and regret it. I would rather want it now and regret it later than than want. Oh, wait, guys, guys, we, we got a peer pressure. Quacks, quacks. Top two. You gotta want it. They? Top two. Who do you want? <laughs> <laughs> quacks looking just woke up. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've been listening. <laughs> I would probably say. I want to see Dragon Steel in pain with how much you've hyped up. Right. Hey, uh, there we go. Everyone is on the same place. We yeah. got it across the board. Sorry, Fear. Uh, maybe you know what? Beat Dragon Steel, and then we'll root for you guys instead. <laughs> let's let's, get, let's get on the same side of the bracket. Well, Fuck it. Do it. Earlier today, I was on Cubby Stream, and we were talking about like the, the fact that they're playing in person as well. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, the Brazilian. Asking... You guys are gonna like yell at them, aren't you? Yeah. They're, they're yeah. Gonna, they yell across like, the are, stage. Are they and stuff. ready for the Brazil Stadium? So. Between the oh, stadium and the, crowd, and the rooms, the crowd is going to be so hateful. There, there is an exposed going area to be a crowd. on the walk between the stage and the green rooms. And last split, uh, yeah, 2024 split one, loud, like the representative from CB Law, their support actually got really pissed because like people were yelling things at them like on the walk to the green room. So there is an exposed <laughs> area there that, like, and I don't think. Any I... of these players from NA have ever experienced anything like that. Now, whether yeah, or not that's... it's a huge crowd oh, will be a question it's because it's weekdays, <laughs> but on no. the weekends, bro. <laughs> that's that's a true uh, uh, sport experience right there. Like yeah, actual know. Latin American sport experience right there. They're, and oh I'm all ready for it. I like I, I can get behind that 100%. Poor, like poor they don't psycho, know. dude. What is what is Psycho going to do in the face of this? Like, like I okay, can tell if, you. If you watch any of the bots, you'll see the players like after the game, sometimes they'll stand up and they're not screaming at the other team like that's that's in-game stuff like the players will literally you think yappa talks in game the players shout at each other across the stage yeah. can they hear each yeah. other probably not but they do it anyways but after the game players sometimes the first thing they stand up and they do is yell at the crowd like i think in the lower finals if i recall correctly kate stars academy after they win the the the, the game tell us first thing he did getting up was <laughs> and starts yelling at the crowd <laughs> first thing he did that right there is latin america that yeah. i can i couldn't be more proud about knowing that they did that because that's just football culture like that's exactly yeah. what you learn from football and that's why i know that in 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 person like i don't fear for the like for the stage stage wise i don't think i have any fear for the latin america south team particularly yeah because they they thrived in that that that's that's something that they are born with or they grow Bro, up what with. released a video of them singing with machetes i know dude that was yeah. awesome i saw that shit yeah like all <laughs> well, it's right. time to tough with the dude, fuck I, up i, loved, I, guess. I, loved, I, loved yeah. uh, I think it was fuego actually yeah. not uh, not fuego. Okay, sorry. Fuego. Uh, yeah. oh yeah add was in it sorry yeah yeah i don't i just remember yanni retweeted it's like repressing added cincinnati fear and he yeah. just said are you guys gonna take this and then Cincinnati <laughs> fear replied like they got machetes man I don't know what we're gonna do yeah please don't kill us or something like that right was your reply God we were spending all of LCS finals <laughs> freaking out about APA question pinging fly question <laughs> impact misspelling calm down is clam doing and now we're gonna go down to fucking Brazil and get machetes pointed out I, uh, I don't know uh, yeah, just to be clear, it the Brazilians with the machetes though <laughs> Oh, no, that's on the lo northern part. Brazilians are more like uh, insults and samba. Oh god. Panda. All right. Well, yeah. what a way to America's way to Challenger this. starts on Saturday. Let's tune on in. I'm actually more worried for NA now after this last couple minutes of discussion. Yeah, this yeah. last five minutes worried me more than no offense, but more like than, that's what more than me. hours of analysis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. T team analysis. Oh. Sleep. We sleep. Fans with machete. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, well, that's huge, the real party. <laughs> huge shout out to RMC for joining up here and, and sharing yes. your, your knowledge with us. Uh, Thanks for having me. <laughs> absolutely, man. Anybody you want to shout out before we close out? Uh, I mean, shout out all the broadcasts. It'll be done in Portuguese, uh, Spanish, and English. There will be three separate broadcasts all running, so you can tune in. Uh, shout out to the individual regions as well. R L L L R N, pardon me, LRS. Um, the way they've managed to do it, the Academy, CB Law Academy, for actually still having an academy system. <laughs> and NACL, of course, you know, for what they're doing. And uh, shout out to Saltmine as well. Thanks for having me on, boys. And for all the coverage you all do, I do listen to the podcast as well to catch up on Tier 3 stuff because I have not been able to follow all the Tier 3 stuff. So Fair. Uh, I really enjoy Fair. the content you all put out. Love it, man. Thanks so much for hopping on. We'll uh, we'll talk more soon. And uh, yeah, let's tune yeah, into Brazil this LCA.
Rooting for NA, <laughs> but rooting for a competitive <laughs> tournament. Yes. I just hope the teams have fun and it's close. The end of Boo! the day. Boo! <laughs> Get out of here. Go ahead. All right, we're done.